I'm with Derek Mason at the Fregat Cafe and uh, the story is that the Fregat is likely to be demolished because of the rising tide. Now it's been here since the end of the 1990s so it's not a very old building and it, architecturally it's a little bit of a gem in Jersey, it's unusual. It'll be very sad if it is demolished. What's your story, Derek? You were there at the beginning? Are you going to be there at the end? Uh, we took, you know, it was, um, it was a joint project with uh, you know, so a very good friend of mine, sadly died a couple of years ago. Um, I just will have designed something very, very similar in Cardiff, right. where an oval two, which was a temporary building, but really? they moved it twice. Really? So this building can be moved rather than be demolished and kind of right. thrown away. Well, it must be a fairly light structure here because obviously it looks like a light structure. Yeah. So it couldn't be insurmountable to move it, could it? It no. must be. No. no. Uh, would you be in favour of that, moving it? No, um, I'd got to contest the, uh, the rationale behind it because if you look at the, um, the island plan kind of um, map, you will see that uh, uh, La Fregat is there look, and it's right. on white. Right. Uh, the increase of water level is, is, is by the slip, and it's, it's a, this master plan is quite ridiculous. It's, it? a, it's asking to reverse um, the slip. Which is is it a bit ridiculous. of King Canute? Is it? That's what happened because King Canute telling you to stop the sea. You think? Well, I, I, I think they should, they should stop the line across the street. We've got right. this beautiful open space with the cafe. Um, ten years' work went into this, right. um, and it's successful. So what, why, why rip it all up? You know. Presumably, if this building does have to go, there are other buildings down here. Like um, we're looking out through the window is the castle, which I've just been looking at. Yeah. But that's been there since 1600. Yeah. Now that's a bit higher. That's built on higher ground than this. So presumably, that will stay. Yeah. Right, these are the carbuncle. Is that going to stay? What do you mean by the carbuncle? Well, what Prince Charles called the carbuncle, the hotel, Radisson. Will that stay? Yeah. Yes. They're, they're not aware of this. Uh, I don't think they're properly aware of this um, mythical 1.2 metre right. high wall right. that they're proposing. And it, if they're going to lift it up here, they might as well go all the way around the harbour, all the way around St. Albans, changing right. the slippers. It's, it's billion dollar nonsense, really. I mean, the 1.2 metres is a lot of wall, isn't it? I yeah. mean, it's going to cost them a fair few quid, yeah. especially if they do it in granite, so... Well, at one of the um, public meetings, public sessions, I pointed out to the uh, Search DC that they'd better put a 1.2 metre wall outside right. their offices in Anway Street, you right. know? Because I remember, I was away from Jersey once down in Midland uh, right. in Cannes, and there was a flood. Oh, sorry. Sorry, there was a flood at the bottom of uh, Gloucester Street, about a metre high. I mean, I lived in century buildings for 10 years and I watched slowly the toxic waste building. Right. You know, it's, it's, uh, what we've got is kind of like a 1960s plan with a uh, kind of housing here. Right. Almost, uh, I was, I, was just, I was just looking at the buildings on the other side of the road. The Grand Hotel I've always thought was an ugly old building. I mean, if somebody, if that was to disappear, I wouldn't be too upset, but... Uh, Neither would I. Eh? No. I don't know where it belongs. In fact, the architecture around here is a fair old mix of different yeah. styles. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's, uh... When you design it with Alsop, what, I mean, was he a very fiery sort of person? Was he adamant that he wanted his design? Or what? How did it come about, this particular design? Uh, it came about when I, I, I'd been, uh, I'd won a competition to, uh, or we'd won a competition to uh, form the housing part of John Scully's web. Oh, right. Friday, 
Scully was a genius, basically, and he, he had uh, one of everybody. He had one QS, he had one landscape, he had one Peter Thorne was there from him. It was maybe about 15, 20 of us in that team. And um, I was itching and twitching. And, and, and Edo rang it. Edo were uh, uh, not eight days a week, but they were world class um, urban designers. And, should, and I kind of retained on the new scheme, but I did ask the question are they involved in the London office? And I was told no, um, because it's unusual for a firm to come back and rip up everything they've done. They do a very good job right. here. And John Scully... Um, Who was the builder, by the way? Like to give was a Peter, Peter Cameron. Cameron's was... Oh, right, OK. He used a boat builder to do the... Ah, to right, the right. That's right. The curve in two directions. That's right. Because there were, there were issues there about... I mean, that, the fact that it's Cedar, which always I thought it won't last five minutes, but it has. It has. Yeah, and it, it still looks spick and span. I mean, it still looks. Yeah. One of the issues we had, because I was very involved with Joe Curtis on the disability issues, yes. and the project came up about like putting an extra floor up there, yes. which architecture would have spoiled this nice shape, but they wanted extra space because they were commercially well, they wanted. Well, it's not quite the uh, story, Michael. It was. Uh, we did have a mezzanine right. scheme with stairs up, and we, we talked. Uh, uh, we went with the um, right. Jill Curtis in her wheelchair to, right. to Leicester, and we, we we found a disabled lift. That's right, I remember that. Yeah. But but uh, all it could do was provide one person really in the right. event of a, an emergency in the lift. So, yeah. Even though we'd started on the site, um, yeah. I mean, uh, I decided know, to change the scheme. Do you think the scheme is better for being a nice... I mean, I know they've got yeah. a lot of clutter here now, but I always thought it made the scheme much better by it's, being a nice space. It's just as good. Yeah. It's just as good as the medicine. Yeah, that's right. Uh, the medicine yeah. scheme would have, would have given us better views out over the sea. Right. And I remember Will wanting that window to be... That high. Oh, right. And John Scully threw me and John Leverage out of his office one day. And we, we shook hands, John and I, thought, well, you know, we'll do what we like now. Was it then, do you think, was there a different attitude towards designing buildings? I mean, uh, you've been around a long time and you've been designing proper buildings yeah. with proper clients, which I never did. I've always been, you know, I'm a, a naive designer and I, my clients wanted quick. Fast and big, that's what my clients wanted, you know. Uh, amongst, I mean, they're doing, stood first doing the history of the AJA at the moment. And you've seen my work, uh, work of Bob Ramotto and myself, Mason Design. And the th four projects he's picked out of Ron Hickman's house. Right. I don't know if you've seen that, Michael. Oh, yeah, I've never been through it, but I've seen it, yeah. Uh, it's pretty impressive, even now, because right. it was built last year and it's coming up to 40 years old. Right. This cafe, um, Berkshire Court, where right. I live, opposite right. Search and Security, right. Right. Yeah, which I did for, for um, very, very, very Vienna influenced. Before we go, just let me show me that picture you've got, that, that blue building in Marseille. Yeah, this is building up. We won a competition for hotel de department in um, I mean, just the colour of it alone. I mean, can yeah, you yeah. imagine Jersey allowing that colour in a prominent yeah. place? Yeah. Would it be? That could be or should be what the new government. And they what they used to be. Oh, Freddie Cohen used to talk about iconic architecture. Yeah, yeah. But something like that would be truly iconic, yeah. wouldn't it? Yes. Yeah. Why are we afraid of it? Um, well, we weren't afraid here, were we? Yeah. Well, but it's on a small scale, isn't it? Yes, yes. Pigments on a large scale for a, for a house. Right, um, yeah. Yeah, I've got to be careful what I say about the planners, but they don't encourage... You say what you like on here. They don't encourage innovation or state-of-the-art or... See, the best building in the bay is that castle out there, isn't it? Now, yes. they had a fairly specific yes. brief, didn't they, the castle? 
Yeah. It's a military, it's got a purpose, you've got a function. Yeah, yeah. But even they won't demolish it, they'll never demolish it. If it falls down, it'll be able to... Some good buildings still on there. You there's, think so? There's the uh, Royal Bank of Canada. Right. It's a very good building. Right. Um, the um, Ogier building. Right. It's a good building. The quality is good. I think it's good. Right. Better than it was. When right. I first came to Jersey, that was a string of... Well, well, the potato warehouses, as they call them, they were interesting buildings. Yes. I mean, I, to my amazement, yes. I went in one the other a few months ago, they and are. I didn't realise what was in there. Of course, it was a. They used to work as factories, yeah, packing yeah. all the rest of it. Yeah. They were quite versatile buildings, really, yes. and simple, simple yes. buildings. Yes. And employed a lot of people. Yes. And it was central in town. Yes, but you know. You know, it was there was a lot of. Potato cracking has got kind of industrialised. That's right, it was, that's right. Yeah. There was a lot there. I don't know where people yeah. used to live then. Yeah. In some horrible little hovel, I expect, I don't know. In, in the granite farmhouses. Well, they were multi generation, weren't they? And still are to some extent. I don't know, because they still brought a lot of people over here to do the packing. Yes. To do, you know, and I've never the quite French, worked at the French Lane, you remember? That's right, it's French Lane. Which was, even when I was here in the 60s, it was a proper little French name, proper French people. Yeah, yeah. Our waitress today, her, one of her parents came from France, there were her grandparents. Yeah. It, it's part of the culture of the island, isn't it? Yeah. But I, I mean, this little building, it's not part of the culture, but it's become part of the culture of the island, this little building. Yes. And it's only a small building, so they are can be quite significant. So it is will be very sad if they did demolish yeah. it, wouldn't it, I think, personally. As much as we fought, we fought you when you were building it, because yeah. we were determined that it would be an accessible building. Yeah, yeah. But I think as it turned out, and as it is, and it was recognised, it did get a few awards. Yeah, well, well, yeah, I went on a tour of British architecture in, in Brazil. It's been featured in a number right. of books, right. uh, principally about workers at the time. This was the only live project on site right. with uh, Osborne Stormer at the time. Yeah. And, uh, um, Will was, was a kind of global superstar you know, was was all over the world. Because he did like shapes, he did like buildings with shapes in them. Well he did in Canada and Toronto, I haven't seen the building, but it's a box, black right. and white, stuck on columns at an right. angle above a traditional building. You know, he was uh, he desperately wanted to do um, Battersea Power Station. Really? Uh, but built very little in the UK actually, but built a lot in Germany where they're more amenable to the world architecture. It's funny because I went for an France. interview many, many, many years ago for an architect who'd done quite a few buildings at the Festival of Britain, you know, projects at the Festival of Britain. 1951. Now, 1951. Now, he was an old guy then, and he was still doing part of what he was doing. I don't know what his name is. He, was, he had a name like O'Keefe or O'Brien, an Irish name. But he'd been quite prominent then, and I didn't, I didn't know him at all. But I was looking on the wall when I went for the interview. I didn't get the job. But I could see the sort of projects he was involved in. They were very adventurous. Yeah, yeah. And that was 1950s. And I thought, what happened to that? What happened to that enthusiasm? You know, there was. Where did it go? Well, I've talked to John Young about it. I mean, John Young has a role in 2002 as Chief Planning Officer. Right. He organised the Waterfront 2000. Right. Um, fast forward 20 years, he's now the Minister and he should I be know. here. Should but he's like... a bureaucrat. I don't want to be unclear. He's a nice enough guy, he's a lovely guy, but he's a yeah. bureaucrat. Well, like he's to... not a designer. Yeah, but he's, he's, uh, he's a good man, you know. He's somebody know. that... Uh, because we did have an architect in charge of the planning office, he didn't live, he died unfortunately, didn't he? Uh, Bob Payton. Bob Payton, yeah. yeah I, did, I was the job architect for Bob's house. Did you Bob, really? Bob was the same age as me and we, yeah. we grew, kind of grew up together. A nice little house in Trouville, I remember, it always looked very nice. Yeah, do you know his house? I haven't been in there, but I've seen it from the outside. The little, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, I was nice. job architect. Well, it was Bob's oh, design. Was it? Bob's design. Oh, yeah. right. I'm quite happy working with... Uh, how do you, if you come up with unusual designs, how do you get the public to go along with you? Because obviously, we don't want buildings like the Radisson. That is, adds nothing, does it? it? Adds nothing. Uh, adds nothing. I think you have to start with your, your client first. Really? 
And I suppose I've been lucky in having good clients. Right. Uh, uh, the Ron Hickman one kind of fell into my lap and I, I right. did ask Ron, is everything we learn about energy? Right. Um, sustainability, 18 patents. Can I use that in social housing? Yeah, yes, Derek. You, you do it right because that's great. Of course, that is one of the disasters over here, the, the, the failure to address the housing problem. It's not unique to Jersey, it's all over the world. Yeah. Yeah. But in a little place like this, with so much wealth, it should have been addressed. Architects, in my view, should have got to grips with it somehow. Listen, Michael, I couldn't have done better. But I took, uh, when I started teaching at uh, Highlands College right. many years ago, I realised that the students, about 15 of them, they didn't know much about uh, Georgian architecture, they knew about modern architecture. So I took them on a trip, Brilliant. London, Oxford and Milton Keynes. Right. Word got round, the next thing I was taking the politicians and the chief architect. Same trip, London, right. Oxford, Milton Keynes. Going through London, and every half an hour, pick it up an architect, show the best of the schemes, and that that grew into visits to um, Vienna, in particular. Um, uh, the one in Sweden, Malmo in Sweden. Uh, the one in um, uh, Germany as well. Like and, and, uh, the late Rob Duhamel, give him credit, was always on those trips. Always. Yeah. Freddie Cohen was on them. It was, um, That's right. But to bring that back to Jersey and try and get it in, you know, I don't, uh, you put one scheme up in the World Architecture Festival in uh, Barcelona once and asked um, um, Charles Jenks, world famous architect, to come have a look at the scheme. And he said, one word, he said, it's Vienna, he said. But, but the politicians have a lifespan of three years, five years. It's not long enough for a project in Jersey to just... I mean, you love going out to the Venice Biennale. I've never been there. What is different about Venetians? Why have they got a love of design? Or haven't they? Is it just a myth? Did the average um, Venetian have a love of design or not? It's not. It's, it's, uh, Venice is absolutely... Maybe I'm with a silk road from China. To Venice, right. a very prosperous, incredibly wealthy right. place. So they had the money, so they had to show it. Right. And they, they built, they built, and they built. They built um, uh, St Mark Square and built around right. it. And, built, and if you go there, it's not quite. They're leaning over, they're falling apart. Right. Uh, it's going to disappear. Yeah, of course it is. Tragically. Well, I mean, I'm it's amazed that the foundations have stood the time. Anyway, I'm amazed that they've stayed there. We're going to have a stop now because I want to have a sip of my tea.